lot of tension and pain really through her coccyx. Um, while she was walking, I noticed a little bit of a transverse pull on that right hip. Um, and so when she told me, <laughs> before she told me that it was her uh, sacrum, I was starting to think about what was happening in her lower lumbar, that L4, L5, um, and then of course the sacred tuber segment. So she did some yoga, she did a lot of spinal twists. And so one of the things that we discussed, um, when you're spinal twisting, if you watch, right? So you're thinking about moving here, but you stabilize a lot of times, particularly as you start to square the hips with this in internal line, right? Like all of these adductors. So if any of this gets shortened or hypertonic, it'll pull through that whole pelvic floor even. Um, so remember that the coccyx and sacrum have an anterior side, not just a posterior side. So you want to start to see if perhaps releasing some of the adductor muscles will give her lower lumbar and sacrum some relief. So what I'm going to do is start to stretch and palpate the adductors, um, looking up into that ischial uh, tuberosity and pubic symphysis. Um, I can even feel that, that tension there. So we might do a little positional release um, for that pubic symphysis. You can actually feel, yeah, it feels like it's just a little bit out of place, right? So we're going to start to uncover some of that. And then I'm going to have her get up, walk around, see if this helps um, her. And then what that does is give me a little bit more of a clearer roadmap around how to do the rest of the session. So if she does get more relief, then I'll focus more on the iliacus and the psoas. You can start to really feel that as well. So the way that she described it was back here is really tight, <clears throat> but that the left is almost as if it were operating independently, maybe some clicks, which a lot of times you can think about <clears throat> as maybe some hypertonicity in the acetabulum, um, which is what the ball joint, that trochanter of the femur sits in. And when that gets really tight, it pulls the femur up into the hip socket. And then if you try to move it, sometimes you'll see clicking. So I just wanna check and see What's going on with the feet? Yeah. So this is a little higher, which um, could be for a number of reasons, but particularly because um, she's feeling all of these issues. It might be indicative of the acetabulum being tight. So we're just kind of loosely draping around and I'm gonna to start to bring her out. So all I'm doing is just starting to see how her adductors feel. So I feel a little bit on that adductor longus there. You can kind of feel that. And so what I'm looking for is what's happening on the other side. I'm looking for the pull across the pelvis, right? So I'm not just thinking about this, but as I move, how much does this hip move? Which will let me know particularly about the pubic symphysis and I can really feel that, that tension there, right, through that, that joint structure. Like the stretching doesn't bother me. No, and so what I'm noticing is that in, so in the rotation of the femur, she's, she's got really, really good range. But as I start to put some pressure, so all of these muscles attach into like the little elephant ears of the hips. Um, Call the ischial tuberosities. Um, and then the pubic symphysis is actually a joint um, at the front of the hips. So as the ilium move around, this allows for that rotational movement. Um, but so as I press here, it's okay. As I go into the midline, is really where I start to see a lot of this. So I'm going to start to just stabilize her leg here and then just give a little bit of a pull here, right? So I'm gonna come down. So I'm just bringing her kind of into a little internal rotation. I'm thinking really about what's happening in the femur and then bringing it up and a little rotation. 
this way, and I'm holding on to her opposite iliac crest to give a little bit of stretch there. And you can even start to feel it kind of down, down here, right? That way. So I'm gonna put her here, I'm gonna keep her in this external rotation because I'm thinking that, again, right, we always operate, the victim is never the perpetrator. Uh, there's some kind of underlying um, deficiency that's creating the pain in the area that's losing the tug of war, if you will. So instead of just going to where the area is painful and pounding away at that, potentially destabilizing the area that's getting tight so that it's protected. I'm looking for where the context is for the pain that she's experiencing. And there we are. So now we're on the opposite side, right? So if you think about the body, like a 360 degree tug of war around the spine and hips. So there's front to back, side to side, diagonally. And if she's experiencing pain in that lower, left posterior area around her sacrum. Now I am on the anterior right side at the iliac crest, really around, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, it is a little bit, I feel it too. And so all I'm doing is kind of just finding the edge of the iliac crest and I'm just Gently palpating. I know. Gently. She's like, gently, geez. And so if you just come and check it out, here's the hip, and I'm, there's the iliac crest, and I'm just, I'm not kind of rolling over it and pressing on the hip. I'm just kind of finding that meaty section just underneath it. I'm not gonna go any further in. Um, any uh, work that I do uh, within that psoas or deeper in, I like to put them on their side when it really clears a lot of the viscera, but it gives them a lot of control, which I think is important. So I'm feeling that this is actually going down really into the hip flexor system. So I'm gonna take uh, this leg, go bring it back to neutral, test out here so we can really feel through here. So I see a lot of this um, bilateral tension happening, right? So in here, through here. So what a lot of that lets me know is that there's probably some kind of torsion happening around the sacrum. Um, and that would make sense because you did a ton of twists. So, <laughs> right? Cool. So now I'm just gonna start to see, does that pinch or pull anywhere as I do that? Um, uh, just anywhere, you can just- When you tie your hand lower. Yeah. Like more. Down and through here? Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. It's not too bad, but. Great. Okay, awesome. But I feel much more on my right side when you're pushing. Yeah, me too. It's crazy. I know. Great. So, I mean, obviously it's not great that she, that, that's tender for her, but we're beginning to uncover the relationships that are happening in her body, right? That's even tighter on my spine. Yeah, so even as I bring her down, if you remember on the other side, as I brought her here, um, she was fairly passive, but you can really see a lot of action here. So again, I'm gonna start to look through this area and again, through here. So it's again, it's not just on the anterior side, but it's also on that posterior side. So I'm just gonna start to move the femur around and I'm just starting to look at where is she tight, where is she moving? What happens on the opposite side? And I might even look a little bit further up. Um, I know that she has a lot of diaphragm uh, issues. So because that pelvic floor and the diaphragm are directly related in terms of tension, again, I might wanna look further up and down. Uh, a lot of times I like to start around the ankle and see if there's anything going on there as far as lines of tension, right? Particularly if she has any deficiencies in her ankle, she'll overuse other stabilizers. I know, right? Good job. So she's just holding back and I'm just gonna give her some time. So we're just gonna hang out here 
and release. And what I'm doing now is starting to look up and down the body. Is she holding in her shoulders, in her jaw? Do I see her toes move? It gives me a little bit more of an understanding of what she does when she's uh, in action, in motion, as she guards or stabilizes, like in yoga. Um, how she does that, right? We all do that differently, um, but similarly as well. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I would like to just try to play around with releasing that pubic synthesis. So it's a pretty easy little release there. If it needs to release, generally, um, you can do so. Oh, we'll get there. I actually, so because I'm noticing uh, particularly, um, so I'm, I, you know, some of the questions I have, so I'll go down into the rectus femoris, the sartorius, all the muscles of the hip flexor system. Um, but some of the questions I have are uh, like what kind of actions she was doing. She was in a deep lunge where this whole system was shortened and then she goes into a twist this is kind of what I'm feeling. So if there's any destabilization there, maybe she was dropping into her knee. Um, that would put a lot of pressure through that rotational call. Well, I've also been doing a lot of hip and pelvis work in Pilates. Okay. To get them more or less strong and, and oh yeah. Because my left side is weaker, so when I like do a standing, I jut out on that hip. Mm hmm Yeah. We're going to sure. the right side. So yeah. over the weekend we were doing lunges back and forth and trying to work with getting me able to balance and stable all my left mm -hmm. without without collapsing yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. So probably what's going on is as she's working on stabilizing this hip, she's using this hip maybe a little bit differently, right? And that's creating some pull. Potentially, right? Again, these are just um, questions. I think, you know, again, one of the things with being a body worker is asking the right questions, not saying, you know, well, it hurts here, so this is where I'm gonna go, but rather, you know, why does it hurt there? Um, what's happening in the body? So that you can begin to unwind those systems. Right, so I can really feel in this rectus femoris, um, particularly on that anterior side of it, that there's quite a bit of tension. So um, what you saw me do before is I was actually just protecting the ligaments because it was so tight. Um, generally, the, the red stuff is like a rubber band. It's meant to expand and retract hundreds of thousands, millions of times in your lifetime, um, and it can recover to its original size after being stretched. Um, whereas our ligaments are more like a heavy duty plastic bag. You can stretch it, it has some give, but once you stretch it to a certain degree, um, it really doesn't come back. So um, if this is tight, I don't wanna put any strain or stress on the attachment points around the, the joints. But this is starting to release fairly nicely, actually. Uh, kind of went from like an overdone piece of beef <laughs> to <laughs> medium. <laughs> um, yeah. So it just seems like she's really getting fairly quad heavy in whatever she's doing. So we're just releasing all of that so that I can uh, start to really address the hip as well. So I'm going to um, do a little bit of that pubic synthesis work and then um, I'm going to probably ask you to get on your side. Um, but before that, just, you know, kind of walk around the room. We'll leave the room. You can walk around. Tell me if you feel any better, if you feel worse, if you feel exactly the same. It gives me a little bit of a better idea where to go next. There's like three or four different ways that we could address this depending on what she's feeling. <coughs> Excuse me. If she's feeling, I know. <laughs> if she's feeling um, much better, then we're gonna go deeper into um, the psoas, in 
to the iliacus, we'll go uh, further into that TFL. If she feels worse, a lot of times that means we need to turn her over and really work on the hamstrings and really through um, those uh, sacrotuberous ligaments, piriformis, glute need. If she feels the same, I'm probably gonna go down to her feet and see if there's something going on in her ankles. And I do feel a little bit of uh, tension there. So um, those would be kind of the three courses of action. Um, I might also wanna look at what's happening in her thoracic spine and of course that L4, L5. So if you'll just take both of your feet uh, up so that they're kind of underneath your knees, bring them, but yeah, just there. And I'm gonna ask you to uh, put your knees together and then push my hands together. Go ahead, push them. Push. Ready? One more time. I'm trying. So bring your feet in just a little bit more. Bring them in towards your butt just slightly. There we go. And push in. Push, push, push. That left side is really hard for me to hold right now. Yeah. And then go ahead. Push in. Push, 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 push. Even more. Press your um, sacrum to the, to the table. I can't. Just keep going. Just I want you to just activate it. All right, so we're gonna leave her to just walk around, take your time. I want you to just do all the things to test and see where you feel tension um, and try to find what feels different. Okay, and then we'll come in in just a second. Okay. You can. 